Hello everyone, I am Sasid Walahakon, software engineer WSO2. In this video, we are going to look in at list data type in Ballerina. There are two types of lists in Ballerina, arrays and tuples. An array has only one type that applies to every member of the list. In contrast with the tuple type, you can specify the type for each member individually. An array can be used to store a set of values with the same type. If we want to create a list of names of persons, for example, the easiest way to do this in Ballerina is with an array. The syntax for creating an array is actually fairly simple. First, we put the type of the values that we need to store in our array. In this case, it is string. Then we open and close two square brackets followed by the name of the variable for the array. So now, if we already know what to put inside in our array, we can simply do that in here. To do this, we write an equal sign, then open and close square brackets and put a semicolon. Inside the square brackets, we put all the values we want to add separated by commas. And because of we are using string in here, we need to remember the quotation marks as well. Now we will create an array with predefined size. For example, I am going to create an array with names of three students. In here also, we put the type of the values that we need to store in our array. In this case, it is string. Then we open and close square brackets and put the predefined array length inside the square brackets. In this case, it is string. Rest is the same as sample we discussed earlier. Now I will add one more value to our array. I will add Gini. So you can see that program gives a compile time error in this scenario. Because we defined our array as predefined length as 3. So it will not allow 4 members. Note that the length of the array can be inferred using star. In here also, we put the type of the values that we need to store in our array, in this case it is string. Then we open and close square brackets and inside the square brackets we put the star. And rest is the same as the sample we discussed earlier. So in here, the length of the array will be inferred using the right hand side. In this case, it is 3. So now I will add a new country value for the array. For that I will use the langlib push method. So inside the push method I will type the country name that I want to add to the array. In this case it is Russia. But you can see that the program gives a compile time error for this. It says cannot call push on fixed length list on type string 3. This is because the program inferred the array length as 3 in the second line. So we cannot add new members to the array. Arrays contain zero base indexers in Ballerina. That means the index of the first element in the array is 0 and the index of the second element is 1. So the index of the nth element is n minus 1. We can access elements inside an array using index values. For example, let's take our initial names array and let's print out the second member in the array. For this, write ioprintln. Then type the name of the array followed by square brackets. And this is where we specify an index. Because the index start from 0, to display the second member, we type the index as 1. So now we can run our Ballerina program and see the result. So you can see that the program outputs John, which is the second member of the array. Now some of you might ask, what is the largest possible index for an array? 
well the answer is the largest possible index is n minus 1 where n is the length of the array any index value greater than that or lower than 0 gives an error now we are going to print the length of an array for this the syntax is to type dot after the name of the array then type length followed by brackets then we assign this into an integer variable so we can print it using io printer length Now let's run our banana program and see the result. The program outputs value 4, which is the length of the array. Now what I need to do is iterate through the name list in the array and print each name individually. For this, we can use for each statement in banana. Type for each and then the type of the elements in the array. In this case, it is string. Then type a variable name for the member, then type the name of the array. Now when the program loops through the collection in for each, we will get the respective member name for variable name. Let's debug and see the behavior of the name variable. In the first iteration, the variable name contains value James. In the second iteration, it contains value John. In the third iteration, it contains value Anna. And in the final iteration, it contains value Ginny. Another way to iterate through a list is using indexes. Here we will use index range instead of list reference. The index range is starting from 0 and ends with array length minus 1. So the index range is smaller than the array length. In this case, it is names.length. Then we print each name in the array by index. So let's run our banana program. You can see that it prints the members of the array. There is another inbuilt iteration function for arrays. To use that, we need to type the list name followed by dot and call the for each. Then we have to define the operation for each element inside the for each function. To showcase this, I will simply use a print statement. Now let's run our Belgana program. So the program iterates through the array and print each member. Now we are going to modify arrays using indexes. Let's take a look at these arrays. The second array contains the towns of the respective person that has the same index in the first array. So Jane's house is in Seattle, Joe's house is in Atlanta, Anna's house is in Boston, and Ginny's house is in Los Angeles. Let's say that John moves his house from Atlanta to Chicago. So now we are going to update the first index of the second array by replacing the value Chicago. The syntax for modifying the list using index is type the list name, in this case it is towns, then square brackets, and inside the square brackets type the index that needs to update, in this case it is 1. After that type equal sign and then type the new value, in this case it is, it is Chicago. Then we can see the updated array by printing it using IO println. Now let's run our Belgana program. 
Now you can see that the first element in the town array is updated as Chicago. So this concludes the end of the part one of our banana array videos. See you in the next video.